always thought, Andy, when you mount this cover here on the outside of the battery shelf, then you are done. And I'm doing this right now. So I guess, I guess we are done. Well, as someone recently commented under one of my videos, this shelf will never be done. There will always be something to do, something to change, to upgrade, to modify, to tweak. It will never be ready. But that's good. I like it. Welcome back guys to another late afternoon. <laughs> it is late afternoon here in sunny hot Australia. It is actually 8 p.m. And I'm doing this I'm doing this work here especially at night now because I need to shut down the whole bus bar system here at the top again to finally connect our MultiPlus 2. It sits here on the power wall for a while now and I want to connect this tonight. I hope I can get this all done. I've got only two or three hours. But, you know, it's only two cables so far, so shouldn't be a problem. But, um, well, people also want to know what kind of decision I made in terms of the bus bars and the connection of the negative cables here. Because there was um, like three options. Um, option one was leaving the cover as it is and going underneath with a negative cable, connect to the bus bar here and have this running in a loop and then use the glands here as my original idea. Number two was to make a cutout here and then connect the negative bus bar directly here and use the top clan to go out in a nice bend. You also came up with a third solution saying, okay, I should have drilled these holes under the cover in this area down there and then go straight onto the bus bar. I didn't realize that very clean very nice solution and um, well decision is made i'm going with solution a no i'm actually not kidding no i'm not i'm not i'm really going with a really <laughs> i'm not kidding this time i'm not kidding <laughs> now i want to tell you why um i made some measurements down here in this area if i move these clans here all the way down and come through it with a straight cable connecting to these bus bars. So there are only eight millimeters left between the gland and the ring terminal. I could, I could push, I could push the cable through from the outside, crimp my ring terminal, get the heat shrink on then, and then push the rest back through the gland to the outside, coming out here in a band and into our slotted duct here and then follow the way to the inverter. It's possible, it's a possible solution. Well, the, the reason I didn't go with this very popular solution this time is because there's, there's actually no slack in the cable then. It is really tight from the clamp to the bus bar. There's, there's no movement possible at all, nothing. And I will need some slack of cable. I don't know how this bending here will work through these two 90 degree bands I need to do with the 70 mil cables. I was already a bit angry with myself buying only the 50 by 50 duct for these DC cables here. I should have gone 75 by 50 or or even 100 by 50 because we will have four we will have four 70 mil cables in there. They all need to go through this bend and through this bend. I need a bit of slack to move the cable back and forward to make this all work. It is workable. It is very very tight in this area. Solution C would not give me the slack I need to move the cable back and forward a bit. I have a little bit of play here with the cable with a bend. But it is, it is. And to be consistent with the original idea, I want to go with the cable all the way this way and then come out here in a bend over and go out to the clans as well then again. So we don't make any cutouts. We don't need to drill any new holes here. Well, you could have guessed it already because the shelf is already in place now, right? Since the last video. So yeah, I um, I will go with um, solution A because then the cable will come in a nice loop to the front and then goes back again. And this gives me enough slack here, enough play with the cable, which I probably need for my 
not so good design here of my 50 by 50 duct. But I measured it here and said, well, four 70 mil cables in a 50 by 50 duct, no problems. Well, it is not a problem, but but getting them around 90 degree angles is a bit of... Okay, so solution A it will be. Thank you for your voting and thanks for all your commenting and all your ideas and suggestions. And I didn't like making a cutout in the cover here. This defeats the purpose of the cover, right? It should be, it should be a cover, you know, it covers things. So we should leave it as it is. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Ah, there's one other thing we need to do beforehand. I told you we also want to install a main switch for the inverters. Because when we use the mega fuses, um, it's very hard to actually disconnect the DC from the inverter in case of uh, an emergency or maintenance or testing or something like this. I want to have at least another switch here or another breaker to turn off the inverters quickly. And this is also part of the regulation. Well, not quite because it is not really necessary because I'm so close to the fuses here. They actually accept the fuse as a disconnection device here for the inverter. But I really want another switch here in this area. So, um, where is it? Ah, oh, here it is. And for this purpose, we will use another battery main switch here. This is a 900 amp plus C battery main switch. Well, up to eight, up to 900 amps, 300 amps continuously, 500 amps, five minutes and 900 amps for 30 seconds. 48 volt DC max. That's the blue C system. Link is down below as always. This is usually for starting very large diesel engines on boats, but we use it here for the inverter, right? And I thought, well, it would be nice to integrate this one somewhere. Well, I will put it down here, right in the corner. So it will basically sit down here in the corner. So the negative cable basically goes down direct way and connects to the inverter straight away without any further interruption here. But the positive will have this main switch here in between. And I couldn't really do it beforehand because I didn't have the 10 millimeter 70 mil ring lugs here for our cable. So I wasn't quite sure on which angle I could actually bend them to um, fit this in here. But now we have the correct angle. So I can like this and this should fit perfectly into the corner. Then we screw this one here on the aluminium and have a nice switch. The only, well, the only downside is I need to mount it like this. We've got the off function basically at the top, but this switch position will suggest it is actually transferring energy. Well, this is actually the on position. I cannot fit it this way because the angles for the cables won't fit. Now it won't because the output of the switch will point downwards. And this is not what I can use here when my cable goes upwards. So I would have liked actually the on position pointing upwards towards the inverter. And then the, um, well, the off position is like this. So it is a bit more intuitive where the switch actually points to when it's on or off. But this is just not possible with the angles I get with the cables here. So it will go this way. And um, well, the off position points to the inverter and the on position doesn't. But I mean, that's why it is labeled off and on, right? So <laughs> it is just what it is. <laughs> Don't give me a hard time about this. Okay, let's do some cutouts here and then get started. So I have um, tapped four holes in here with M5. Uh, I don't have the screws for it. Well, the screws go from the top here all the way through the body into my aluminium sheet here. I don't have this length here, M5 by... Doesn't matter, we can still continue connecting the switch and we put the screws in later. 
So next step would be to turn off the power because I need to remove this cover here. I probably just turn off the main switch because in this case the smart shunt will stay online and remembers the state of charge of the battery. We could press the button here. Then it trips. Nah, I need the tool. Oh! <laughs> I knew it would scare me. Oh, shitty. <laughs> it is so loud. Okay, so this is now in the trip position here. And to turn it back on, we need to pull it down and then all the way up again. So we should have no light. Now there's no light here on the inverter. There's no light on this converter. Inverter. Converter. We should have no power here on the bus by anymore and can safely work in this section here. I'll just measure it again. Just to make sure. Always measure. Okay, so solution A was around, down here, up here. Can have this a bit in an angle. Hang on, the cover is back on. The positive comes up here and the negative comes up here as well and they can go in parallel then to the glands and I can use some uh, velcro yeah I can use some velcro straps as well to keep them together as a pair there we go ah that's what I mean it will be very very tight maybe a bit longer <laughs> Just give me a bit more space here. That's that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Washer, copper spring washer, and the nut. Let's see if we can get this straight. I don't know how much um, Newton meter. I think exactly this. <laughs> I don't know. I need to talk it later. I think it was 11 something or whatever. Okay, so this is our negative which is actually positive that we have at least one cable in here oh. and the duct is already full wow so the positive will jump over here because it needs to go on this side anyway to the positive terminal and down here we need to push this one up as far as possible here yeah and I'm not sure with these 90 degrees here this will be very very tight that is fine. We've got enough slack here and we've got heaps of cable left here to push it back and forward now to adjust the length depending on what happens here in the corners. And this was one reason to go with option A actually to um, yeah have enough cable left. Well we officially have connected the battery negative to our terminal here of the inverter. It was easy. Be nice and tight. Uh, something like this. I think I don't bother putting heat shrink on these bus bars here to the fuse holders. I'll leave them blank because they will be covered here anyway by, by our acrylic and also there's a fuse cover for each of the fuses here. So Apparently this is maximum 13.6 Newton meters for the blue C main battery switches But my torque adapter would not fit on this socket So I need to guess what 13.6 Newton meter is I would say I would say This is already pretty close 
Yeah, I think we are at 13.4 now. Oh yeah, it fits. But I have no idea how I will pull two more of these thick cables in here. I should have really gone with a larger duct down here. Four times 70 mil cable is a lot. Anyway, it is what it is now. Okay, this will be probably like this and I have to go one up here, one down here to the other inverter. We will see, we will see. Yeah, especially here in these bends, there is really not much room. This cover back on. I have to custom cut these covers here as well because they are not designed for bus bars. They have round openings on both ends and they are certainly not designed for a 90 degree angle cable connection here. We are only one cable connection away from connecting the inverter. Okay, Google. What's the time? It's 10.40 p.m. I think we are calling it the night now. What I've done is I have disconnected our positive here again from the mega fuse. So we are completely isolated here again. Just the negative is connected to the negative um, terminal of the battery here. But we can work on the positive here still without any harm and connect the rest. And then turn this one on for the very first time tomorrow. Eh, I'm excited. Fuck yeah, I am excited. Until tomorrow, guys, you have a good night's sleep, sweet dreams, and tomorrow we are doing it. Ah, says it here. Achtung! Dieses Gerät ist nicht gesuchert gegen umgekehrte Polarität. What? What? Come on, Victron, come on! Get this right! Get someone in there who can actually speak and write German! That is terrible! <laughs>